very good day to you and welcome to the program. I want to speak to you about a subject that is very, very hard to enact, forgiveness. It doesn't come naturally, not to any of us, especially when you've been severely hurt by someone that you love and you respect and they've let you down and God says, forgive them. You say, Lord, I can't. They've hurt me so badly. They've disappointed me. I'm not even going to church anymore. I'm so angry. I'm so disappointed. Forgive them and move on. Why, you say? Because God forgave you. Okay? And He forgave you and He paid in full for all your sin. If you look at the Word of God in John chapter 15 and verse 13, the Bible says, Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus died for your sin. Never mind forgave you. He died for you. And he says, we must go and do likewise. I was reading early this morning in my quiet time, and I'm reading in the book of 2 Corinthians at the moment, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and, and verse 7 and verse 8. Listen to what Paul says. So that, on the contrary, you ought rather to forgive and to comfort him, lest perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Verse 8. Therefore I urge you to reaffirm your love to him. When a person has made a mistake, okay, he feels wretched. Okay, he's dropped the ball, he's done something wrong, he's gone to jail, now he's shamed the whole family, and the family are so angry with him. Maybe your son has disappointed you at school, and now you are the talk of the town. Maybe your daughter has got pregnant out of wedlock, and now you are so angry with her, you won't forgive her. The Lord says she has got so much sorrow on her already, He's got so much sorrow on him because of what he did wrong. You have to forgive him and not only forgive him, but to love him as well. And when you do that, God sets you free. Folks, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people think. What matters is what God thinks. I've walked this road a long time. And I want to tell you time and time again, the very people that you try to impress are the people that as soon as you make one mistake, they drop you. But your family is with you always, right to the end. You need to stick by them. You need to go from this program and tell your loved one that you love them. Unconditionally. You cannot, you cannot love the sin, okay? But you don't hate the sinner. So we might not like what they've done, but... We don't, that doesn't change our love for them as a person. So often you get it mixed up. The sin and the sinner together, all of them out. No, they are ordinary people like you and me, and they've been caught. Whether it be from the devil, whether it be lust of the flesh, whether it be uh, false instruction, whatever it might be. Now they are sorry because they've made an absolute mess. You need to forgive them. You need to move on. Every man of God that's done anything in this book made mistakes. Every single one of them. Peter, who the Lord used to head up the church, denied Jesus three times, not once. And yet, yet the Lord still called him to feed his sheep. Saul of Tarsus was hell-bent on killing Christians. And God used him as the greatest evangelist in the New Testament apart from Jesus. So you see, the Lord forgives. And sometimes that forgiveness sets the person free. And it also takes away that hatred and that anger out of your heart. Just forgive them. Say, listen, I cannot condone what you did, but I want to tell you I love you and I forgive you. That's all. You set them free so that they can restore their lives. Forgive. Goodbye. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.